15th of March, 2004. Some woman come home from uni, entered the house, obviously, to find these four boys. So she says, four boys in the house. The next thing I, I heard, like, you know, off the, off the police, they followed her into the dining room, uh, sat her on a chair, put a knife to her throat, threatened to smash a hole in her skull with a, a lump hammer. Anyway, I was 12 years for the, you know, 12 years. At the age of 15, they give me a, they give me a 12 year sentence where they put me on a fucking lifer's wing. You know, my, my whole life just switched. What I want, I want the real boys who've done it to go to prison for the car. You know, uh, I've served my fucking mental health. I've served my prison sentence. So, 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 so you don't want to say who they are. I don't mind saying I don't mind saying who they are. I don't mind saying who they are. This is to clear my name at the end of the day. And if I don't say names, it ain't gonna clear my name, is it? You know? What's going on, people? Welcome to the Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing and O Snap Cardiff. If you haven't already, make sure you press that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. Today's guest is something a little bit different. Um, normally, I'd be doing a star studded introduction, uh, but he's come on just to tell his story. And like all of us, he's got a past. But in this case, he feels like he's he's been done wrong. And uh, this has a story and a message that he wants to share here at the club. We have in the past done plenty of interviews with people who have been wrongly accused in the criminal justice system and stuff like that. And I think this one's quite similar. Um, I don't want to do too much talking and uh, I'm basically going to hand it over to him. I welcome Jamie Perkins. All right, thank you. How are you, mate? Not bad. Not yeah. bad yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's hot weather in it like so Thank it's a bit you. hot but i'm glad glad you come down i know we've we've spoken a few times on yeah. social media um i spoken well i spoke to someone he he, he came to me basically in conversation and he mentioned I you. he messaged me i think i know you're uh you're on about yeah yeah he messaged me and he was like you need to get this guy on and i was like i didn't really know nothing about it um he started sending me clips on tiktok and facebook and yeah. stuff and it was in a way, I was like, it didn't make sense in a way, but I could see the pain, the this, frustration and stuff. Yeah, and that's, what, that's what they've all said, you know. Why would you be in that state if, yeah. if you were lying, you know? Yeah, so what, what I'm going to do is, before we even jump into it, because I can see it is, is, is hard for you, so yeah. before we even jump in, can you just give us a quick rundown for the people so they can kind of have an idea of why yeah. you are here? Um, I'm here for myself, obviously, because I was convicted of a crime back in 2004 uh everyone knew i didn't do it so now i'm back to finally get my justice together people who really done their crime uh and serve their time for what they've done you know okay That's okay it. um well let, let's just um let's not uh, beat around the bush can you take us back to um you know the days couple of days leading up to it what what happened can you pick right can you pick the picture Right, what it was, uh, you know, come home on normal school day. Uh, my mum, I got a, a, there's six of us in the, in the family, so obviously one girl, five brothers. Uh, one of us have got a different dad to the rest. So um, at the time, you know, my mum used to go up his house, the her partners, which is the separate son, um, and she used to lock the door up. You know, obviously, a mum ain't gonna let her stay in the house. You know on the night on her own. I was only 15. So uh, my sister decided to stay out uh, over the friend's house. And apparently, like, obviously, my friend was the same friend. Obviously, it was a sister, and I was, I was friends with a brother. So um, my mum wanted to lock the house up. So I come back to my house about 10 to 6, maybe something, yeah, 10 to 6. Uh, the next thing, I asked my mum, can I stay over this mate's house? She told me no, because obviously my sister was over there. And I had to go over my brother's, uh, which was either in Tremorfa or Fairwater. And obviously I didn't go any, over any of them. So me and my two mates done a runner <clears throat> about 10 past six. Disappeared till about 20 past, because I knew my mum went out at half past six. She rode a little bike to the pub and all that. So the next thing, I broke back into my mum's house with my two mates. There was, you know, there was a little bathroom window on the back. 
when my brothers come home pissed up and obviously they just pop the window, you know? So that's what we done. Me and my two mates went and got a drawer and stuff and went and chilled on my mum's bed. Uh, next, mo- next morning, well, you know, wakes up to my mum over the, over the bed. You know, I'm grounded. Jay, you're fucking staying in. Tell your mates to go home, you know? They left. Um, so I was in then. I was in all, all day, you know? I was grounded. Uh, I remember my brother's mate coming to my mum's house and asking to see my brother. And my brother weren't here at the time, so obviously I was, because I was grounded. This was like the day after this now that uh, yeah. I broke back in. So, uh, you know, brother's mate explained there was a scrap happening down on the square in my area. And it was crowds and crowds, he was saying. So obviously I begged my mother to get down there, like to see, see the boys, you know, they're my boys, like, you know. So she said, yeah, go on, you go. Don't get out of the car. I said, no, you know, my mate, my mate promised I wouldn't get out of the car. Finished the fight, you know, and it was just crowds everywhere. But anyway, at the time, I was in the back of my mate's car and a couple of boys come over in hoodies and stuff and gloves. You know, it was, it was a bit of a warm day, like March, April. What are you doing wearing hats now, you know? Uh, they, they then said that they'd done a burglary that, sm- that morning, but obviously they, you want to see the one they'd done last night where they tied a woman up and stuff. So me and my mate was in the car. We were like, oh, you're all fucking nuts. You know, you're only young. Like, go away, you know? Are they the same age as you, these boys? Uh, I was 15. They were, some of them was 14. Some was 12, you know, I'd, you know. 12-year-olds tying women up. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, Carl. 12-year-olds. And this is what it was like back then. But, um, yeah, so the next thing, they've, they've come to the car and all said about this, this thing the next day. So I didn't think nothing of it. You know, went home, just lived my day. I, you know, I kept going out with them. Obviously, there's nothing to do with me. Carried on with my life. Um, two weeks after, I think it was about... Uh, April something, just before my birthday, my 16th birthday, gets locked up outside uh, Adamstown Post Office. Now, at the time, we used to be little shits down our end, you know, chuck stones at taxis, get chased. It was our board, like, down there. We used to cause trouble. And uh, the next thing, I've we're getting chased by, like, I don't know if it was police or taxi drivers, and I've run across the road in front of a car. Well, little did I know, it was that fucking victim in the car, you know? So she's obviously gone and parked the car up. Um, me and my mates have obviously run to the post office from the cemetery, if you know it. And then the next thing, there's police everywhere. Uh, six of us run. Obviously, they're the boys I was with. Two of them with me was involved in the crime. I was, you know, I guess locked up for... So anyway, I'm jump- I've jumped up on a wall... And two coppers have grabbed me and just ripped me off the wall, put me on my face on the floor. Uh, wouldn't tell me what I was locked up for until I had my appropriate adult with me in the station. So the next thing, I'm on, I'm on my way to the station. Uh, waited like four or five hours for my brother to get there for an interview. And then obviously I went into the interview then and he explained to me what I was locked up for, which was an aggravated burglary and a robbery and a house dwelling, right? So didn't know nothing about it. You know, I was 15 years of age. Did you used to do burglaries at that time though? Never, ever done a burglary in my life. Never, never. Just like you said, it was them days. That's what, that was the thing. That was. Car joyriding was 10 years before that. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. But I I was, uh, how can you say, too respectful for the people around my area. You know, it was all old people and stuff like that. And, you know, so that's it. I mean, I mean, the station now down Fairwater and I have the phone call uh, oh no, the, the police come in obviously my brother was there goes into this interview uh, finds out exactly what happened um, can you tell us what happened? Or? yeah um, what it was normal day 15th of March 2004 at 6.40 at night four youths uh Enter the property in Adamstown Square. 
Um, it's on the strip, like it's, it's it's in the area, like. It's, Adam's Town Square is big. Adam Town Square is big, you know. So, if you go to Adam Town Square, you find like four different streets, you know. So, anyway, some woman come home from uni. I think it was uni or shopping. Entered the house, obviously, to find these four boys. So she says, four boys in the house. Um, she dropped her shopping bags on the floor, you know, slammed the door behind her and screamed and stuff. Um, the next thing I, I heard, like, you know, off the, off the police, they followed her into the dining room, uh, sat her on a chair, put a knife to her throat, uh, demanded money, threatened to smash a hole in her skull with a, a lump hammer if she didn't give her money. Um, and took, I think, I think she handed over fifty pound in a car, car keys and a laptop, and they obviously done a runner. Um, anyway, I'm in the police station, obviously, you know, crying to my brother. I, you know, I, I don't know what they're on about. Um, you know, two days went by, five days went by, eleven days. I was in the station for. Um, in the police station. Police station for eleven days. I asked. I asked for showers. I asked for fucking brush my teeth and that. Refused me. Right. Eleven days. I was in there for. Just before my birthday, I got bail. So. Uh, anyway, I find out what happened, and I, it all clicks back. Then, you know, who told me what on that bus stop, with a fight, and one night it was, and who I was with. You know, it all clicked into place. So. You know, 11 days I'm in this police station, I get bail. Uh, they bail me for two weeks, I think, for sentencing, uh, to see if I get charged. So I went about my life, you know. All my boys was uh, telling all these boys who'd done the burglary, you know, you better sort it out. They were laughing about it like it was some fucking joke. Um, you know. Sorry, did any of them get arrested for this then? Yeah, they, Three of them got it. This, but this, I've only just found out this out. Oh right, okay. You last sorry. year, so uh, yeah, you know, all my boys now are arguing with these boys because obviously they've done me dirty, you know. But obviously, let's let's, let's be real. Who's gonna go into a fucking police station and say I done this? You know, you know. So you you're just not gonna say nothing. So the next thing now, I. I I get locked up for a breach and, you know, a stupid fucking see me in this area when he never and stuff like that. Anyway, I go to prison. I was on remand for four or five days in Juvies and Park. So, you know, I'm getting comfy on there. Next thing, sentencing. Goes to Cardiff Crown Court. Uh, they found me guilty because obviously the woman was in court saying, you know, you put a knife to my throat, it was you. You know, I was only a 15-year-old boy. I was crying to her saying, you know, like, I've never seen you in my life before. So, that was me. So, they called my mum up. They come up. They called my mum up in court. And they basically, they basically South Wales Police, have harassed my mum for a statement to say, I left my house 10 past 6 with two boys and she didn't see me for the rest of the night, which was true, which was true because she didn't come back to the next day. But my alibis was my two mates I was with the whole night, you know? So they got my mum my mum up in court. She gave a statement about how I left there 10 past six with, you know, two mates and she didn't see me till the next day. That's why they found me guilty because obviously my mum put me at the scene, stuff like that. Um, anyway, I was 12 years for the, you know, twelve years. At the age of fifteen, they give me a, they give me a twelve year sentence. Uh, I went to a Wildwise up in Bristol, where they put me on a fucking lifer's wing. You know, my my whole life just switched. I was I was trying to be an aircraft engineer. You know, up in Barry and stuff. So obviously, when this happened, it fucked my life up. You know, everything went. Um, I'm in jail. And I think it was about a week, maybe two, I was still on induction. And see that burglary they'd done when it came to the car? Two of the boys are in prison for it, for that second one. So uh, 
you know, I'm threatening them now, I'm going to slice your throat, I'm going to fucking kill you, la la la. Next day they were moved off the wing. And I still haven't seen them boys to this day. Um, Would you, sorry, um, did anyone else get sentenced for that? Only person? myself. So, it's, you know, they knew there was four, but they were just happy with one. By the looks of it, yeah, you know. By the looks of it, but this is where they harassed my mum for that statement, see. And obviously, she put me at the scene. You know, she, I told her to go court and tell the truth. You know, she's not going to put me to prison for telling the truth. But it turned out, obviously, it did. Um, you know, I'm in prison. I, You know, I tried committing suicide, I'm not going to lie. Crying every night. Um, you know, I was having a piss taken out of me. Even by the boys who done it, they, they even had, had the trick to get hold of a mobile phone, ring my 11-year-old sister and threaten to rape her, gang rape her, um, if I open my mouth to the police. So, you know, I'm on this lifer's wing now, serving 12-year sentence. You know, I wouldn't say I was getting bullied, but, you know, a few boys were saying their words to me because the rumour was I was a, it was an old woman, but it wasn't. It was a student, you know, so when it all came out, it was all, it was so all right. So you're getting it from all aspects. Oh, yeah. You big, you, you know, you fucking, <laughs> yeah, a vulnerable old lady and... A knife to her throat and threatened to smash her head in and this and that, you know. What what type of boy was you? Obviously, you was on the estate. You said you went around with these kids and stuff. Who was a Jamie Perkins before that sentence? Was you was you about that life? Was you was you not a truck like, you know, was you just caught up in the wrong thing? You know, I'll tell you the God's honest truth. Scapegoat. I'll tell you the God's honest truth. You know, I'd play my part in smashing car windows, flambags bags and phones. You know, I'd play my part and I, won't, I ain't going to, you know, just deny that to anybody. But I would never, ever run in someone's office and put a knife to a throat. Never in my life. You know, and this is what, I, what have eaten me up so much because I know I haven't fucking done a thing, you know. And all these boys who've done it, they know exactly what's going on. They know I, I wasn't even a part of it, like, you know. And like I said, if I was a part of it, you know, I would have accepted the sentence. Uh, which you've done now. And which I've done, which I got out in 2007 for. Uh, you know, when I was locked up, it, it wasn't just people having their opinions on me. It was, uh, I had a phone call with one of the boys as well who was involved in the crime. No, actually, I phoned the boy I was with on the night as my alibi, and uh, he was with one of the boys who'd done the burglary. And, you know, he come on the phone laughing at me and stuff and uh, telling me it is what it is and I, you know, I'm locked up now, obviously. Um, you know, I got onto my solicitor straight away from the, for the fucking transcripts for my appeal. Yeah, yeah, because, listen, yeah, right, prison, right, when you're on them prison phones, uh, they, there's always someone listening, so did they give be, you them transcripts? They gave me the transcripts last year to the phone call. Uh? I've only just got them last year for a solicitor. Because obviously I, I've, I've uh, put my story up on social media and obviously a solicitor contacted me and she's done digging which obviously I couldn't do. And she's pulled it all up for me, like, you know. She's got the transcripts of uh, that phone call. I found out the hammer was in my evidence box, which wasn't even raised in court. They arrested me on a pair of footprints, which was two sizes too small for me. But I still went to prison with the same trainers on. See you know what I mean? It's like stuff like this, like I've, I've played on my mind for 18 years, you know. And everyone in my area, you know, before this crime, <clears throat> Jamie Perkins was a polite, you know, a polite kid. You know, we don't move out the way the doors for everybody and, you know, just do anything for anyone, I suppose. Uh, I was growing up, I was only 15, you know, I was learning off my mum and stuff, you know. Still a kid, mate. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just didn't, I don't know what came across me when I was inside. Uh, I just wouldn't let it beat me, you know. I tried committing suicide twice when I was in there. Um, and I, I just thought deep down to myself, do you know what? Like, I know myself. I haven't done anything wrong. So that's why I didn't go through my, my suicides, like, you know. Because if I did commit suicide back then, they don't think I would have done it. Yeah. You know? And There'd be no one shouting this out now, because... Exactly, and 
you know, who's going to be shouting out 18 years after? They, they haven't done a crime, but they've done a sentence, you know? Well, look, we've all been in jail, and we've, like, well, we haven't all been in jail, but what I'm saying is, when you've been in jail, if you've been in jail, you yeah. know that a lot of people shout their innocence, and it's the same thing you'll get off a screw or off other people. We're all innocent. Oh, in I, your, had you know? I had it. I Don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to deny it. I had it. I, I used to sit there with my mate and, you know, not sit there, but stand there and have a coffee with a screw, and I'd be telling my story. And he'd laugh and just say, like, you know, Half of them are fucking innocent, didn't you? Yeah, but that's what you would think. That's the most frustrating thing. Yeah, it? like it. Like I'm not like I'm. I'm not saying you're 100 percent innocent. Cause I don't know, but, but from you looking don't. what you're saying, I can see like the pain and and yeah. and, and, and if you are, then I can only imagine how you felt. And this is what I'm saying. Like, you know, I felt, I felt like I had the fucking world on my shoulders. You know, um, I couldn't explain to my family properly. You know, I was banged up. 15 years of age, on a life as well, with fucking rapists and murderers. So, I mean, I didn't, didn't know what to do. You know, I used to phone my mum every other fucking day crying and make myself look like a twat on a wing. You know, I've brought my story out on social media. You know, I'm 34 years of age, crying on air. You know, it's a fucking painful story. And everyone I know, everyone I know from, from school to raise to now, who's watching this and see my story on TikTok, you know, they all know I'm innocent. Even my, I even had teachers and stuff like that sending me letters, you know, saying sorry for what have, what have happened and that. So, so was this um, common knowledge outside then that it was, you know, Jamie Perkins is innocent? Everyone knew, Carl. Everyone, I don't know how, because obviously my friend have told me about name calling out on a bus stop and, uh, found out my name was called out in a house. So this is most probably what led up to my conviction, you know. Um, it's just some people are say, you know, you must have done something because you went to jail for it. You know, she picked you up on an ID parade. This is to try these ideas to get you off, whatever, whatever. Yeah, like what's, what, what, what would you say to that? Um, these Because she did pick you. Like, is, is it, what... what Sorry, so what kind of um, evaluation have you got from all of this? Like, um, of... Do you know what? I haven't got nothing at the moment. Everything I've, I'm doing for my case, I haven't got like, basically, I, I, you know, I got my followers and stuff like that. Uh, I got people and, you know, but nothing, literally. What I'm saying is, have you got an answer in your head or an got, idea yeah, of yeah. why she... Did do that? Yeah, was I've, it police? Was it th was it just them grassing you up? The, the the what was it? Um, I've I've got I've got my own reasons to believe. Um, you know, I don't know whether I should explain it because it's, listen, get it out. Whatever you need to get out, because someone might see this and be able to help. Yeah, but um, obviously, you know that uh, Tiger Bakelin, you know, um, I respect John Acty. You know, I was in trying to get in touch with him and stuff. Um, well, the, the woman who lied in that case, you know, my cousin was involved in her, which I think she was a pimp. So, yeah, so this is, you know, obviously when they all found out this woman was lying about the Tiger Baker in, you know, my cousin was there to put obviously straight and whatever, whatever. Tell the truth. Tell the okay. truth, go to court, tell the truth. She did, obviously, because obviously you've all seen the story. Um, so I'm wondering if they stitch me up for that, you know? You you think it might be that deep, that the police, because your do cousin you know intervened in that case? I like, really do. I really fucking do. Because there's no, there's no explanation for it. You know, I was only a kid. I was only 15. Um, they had to get it back on someone, and I bet you they were buzzing when it came through. It was me, you know what I mean, on this burglary thing. Uh, I really don't know where the fuck they got this from. I don't know how they come across this story. Well, you could say, you know, you did hang around with the other four. And, yeah. You know, Do you know what? Two easily of them, two of them I did. Two of them I did. You know, I was, I was quite close to two of them. Uh, two of them was out, out of the area, you know. So when they come, they obviously, this is what puts me in a bit of a pickle now. Because obviously they, my name was called out in this house, 
by Jamie Campbell. Now, everyone who knows me around my area knows I'm a Perkins, registered Perkins. So i got to guess it's those two boys out of the area who call my name out, Jamie Campbell, because obviously they didn't know me that well. They knew me, they knew me from my cousin, you know? So the Campbell name, so obviously they've just come to the area. They haven't long met me. They know me as Jamie Campbell. Yeah, you know, known as Perkins, Sam, um, like... You know, so... Do you think the police think that as well, and they just know you as a Campbell? The police... Well, they must have known you as a Perkins. The police knows I'm a Perkins, but obviously my family's a Campbells, you know? So, and obviously my family's are... They were fuckers, like, you know, they, they got involved in shit. So I'm just thinking, like, have they took, took it out on me for some reason, you know? But all this 18 years, I thought to myself, no, it, it can't be you know, the police and stuff, they were obviously just doing their job, but obviously it all clicked in. You know, when, when the police interviews you, obviously you know how it goes. They they try tying you up and stitching you up. Well, obviously my mum's statement put me out the house, you know? So they decided to charge me over that. The lady was on the fucking corner watching me for a half hour prior before the police locked me up. She obviously knew what I fucking looked like, didn't it? In the interview, <laughs> see what I mean? In the ID parade. In the an ID parade, yeah. yeah. So it shouldn't even went to court. You know, the police didn't even interview the boys. Didn't Should even... have went to court, but not with you. But the boys... Because someone did get tied up yeah, and fucking... Yeah, 100%. But see the boys I was with on a night? They didn't even get questioned. They didn't even get pulled in. They didn't even get fucking nothing. Now, those boys were with me all night until my mother woke us up the next morning. They were the only people deep down who knew my innocence that night. So where are they in all this? They're out there. They're still out there. I've spoke to one of the boys. I've spoke to the two of them, actually. Uh, one of them, willing to 100% come to court. The other one, can't remember. But everyone in my area remembers it. So, but that one person can't. So, you know, this is why I've had to do it. Cause I've, had to, I've had to get my story out. I've had to do what I've had to do. Uh, well, there's obviously bits that, you, you know, you're keeping... Well, you haven't said yet. Yeah. Um, is there things you want to let people know? Like, is it, like, do you, do you still see the people who actually like? Do you know for certain they done it? I know a million percent they done it. They've uh, they've admitted it to my face. They've admitted it to people in my area. They know I. They know I know they done it. Right. They admitted it to me that day in the car on the bus stop. Uh, I never forget the day. He laughed in my face. Um, I'm threatened to rape my little eleven year old sister. You know, she's fucked up in the head now. So is it, is it because of that? You know? Oh, he said it to her face, like... Exactly. Uh, you know, she was she was, she was was only 11, and she was... Me and her was uh, quite close, you know? You speak to anyone I know. Me and her was like fucking the body in the shadow, you know? And uh, when I went to prison, she was getting abused by him. You know what I mean? Which sister? Is that the one who's with... Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, she was getting abused by him, like, you know what I mean? Like winding her up and I saying fucking, if I went to the police, they'd rape her and stuff like that. And I've always thought to myself in my head, you know what? When I was a kid, I was scared. I was scared to tell my story and let people listen to what I went through because obviously the people I was in school with, they didn't. I got taken to jail and that was it, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's just... Everyone, everyone who knows me, everyone who knows what happened when I was in prison, you know, I need help with my case and I gotta do what I gotta do, you know. I didn't do it, I wouldn't be here if I didn't, if I did, you know, and it's just not, it's just nuts. Do you think you're gonna get justice then, really, truthfully? Honestly? From 18 years ago. I'm not gonna stop till I get it. That's, that's how much power I got in me, Cal. Uh, I know. I know deep down I didn't do it. People in my area knows I didn't do it. My solicitor knows I didn't do it. You know, everyone knows I didn't do it, but they just didn't have that fight in them to back me up, you know. But I will get justice, whether it's, you know, I've, I've waited 18 years now. I could wait another 18. So how, how has this affected you got moving on in your life then? Because this is still, you say, yeah, it was 18 years, you know, 18 years ago. 18 years ago, you, you, could, you could have healed yourself since then, or is it? Do you know what? I've tried healing myself. I moved to Germany when I got to jail in 07. Um, I tried burning the back of my head, you know, and 
ask any innocent man who claims they're innocent and been in jail for innocence, you can avoid that shit. Um, you know, I've tried moving on. I've tried moving to Germany. I've tried having children to move on, you know, a couple of years back. They see me cry every day, you know, because every day I wake up, I think of that poor woman. Well, I have been for the last 18 years. But obviously, since my new solicitor, and obviously digging some stuff, oh, sorry, I couldn't give a fuck about that lady now. You know, I'm doing this for me. I tried committing suicide. I went through the 12 years of fucking shit. I haven't got a fucking job with my criminal record because of that fucking thing. You know, I can't do this and that. Why? Just because of that one stupid thing, you know? And if i got to clear my name, I'll clear my name. So um, these people are still about then. Are you willing to tell people who they are? Is there, Are they the problem? You know, what's going they on? They ain't a problem. Uh but if you know they, if you like, I get. Is it a is it a thing about like I don't want to grass them? Maybe, but they've done. You know, it's you've not, done time for these it's people. Not, it's not being a grass, and I'll tell you why it ain't. Because, like I said at the beginning of the interview, if I was there, and now I'm back eighteen years after saying names, that is a that is a snitch. But for someone to not even be there, you know, not even be at the scene of a crime and then gets arrested two weeks later, I think I, I think I owe that to myself, you know? So the the, the buck got to stop, you've got to pass the buck, you know, it's got to stop somewhere. Yeah. So who, who's to blame? Uh, my solicitor, John Wilkins. Um, John Wilkins? John Wilkins, Clifton Street. Uh, sh shut down now. If you if you want to know where uh, he works now, I can. Um, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, isn't it? My barrister, David Bunnell, you know, I was crying to them constantly. PC Fenton, the copper, you know, the arresting officer. I mean, he's done it in a while. He's dead. Is he? He just died of cancer two years ago. Uh, you know, I was crying to him. I was, I was only a young kid. I was screaming for help, you know, and it never, ever come, you know. When I was in prison and I had that phone call, I had an appeal. I think it was about... A week after, uh, well, this is it. It went to the first judge. It didn't go to the second judge because there was no evidence of my innocence. Now, my solicitor have just dug up that in that appeal, that phone call transcript was raised and someone tried putting a stop to the appeal because it should have cleared my name. Now... The judge, which is dead as well, unfortunately, Judge Richards, uh, he also fucking gave me a wrong sentence. You know, he gave me he gave me a completely wrong sentence. What I done, you know, I was there's no way there's no other way I can explain it. Honestly, I've I've you know I've gone every way I could about it. You know, um, they all they 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 must have knew what was happening. They must have. Because I was a young boy, you know, I was I was in that courtroom. I had the lady there saying it was me. <clears throat> it was me. Um I just I just don't know how the fuck I got convicted for it, but I did. Yeah. It's it's a mad one, isn't it? Because it's like 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 what kind of justice do you looking for now? Are you like and I, great, it's great social media's here because people will look at this and probably think, wow, I feel sorry for this guy. You can yeah. tell he's really been through it. And But like, is it, is it government, like do you want someone in the government to clear your name? Because you know it? it's hard. What I want, I want the real boys who've done it to go to prison for the call, you know? Uh, I've served my fucking mental health. I've served my prison sentence. So, 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 so you don't want to say who they are? I don't, mind say, I don't mind saying who they are. I don't mind saying who they are. So this is to clear my name at the end of the day. And if I don't say names, it ain't going to clear my name, is it? You know? Do you need a work uniform? Want to start a clothing brand? Or maybe you have a football kit that needs a logo printed? Well, if I was you, I'd get in touch with the Reinspire Printing Company down Traforest Industrial Estate for the finest printing and embroidery in Wales. I use them for my custom-made mankini. But you could use them for T-shirts, hats, hoodies, and many, many other things. So, okay. yeah, if you want to know him, 
Well, so, well, no. Like, listen, we probably want to know him, but but but, but like, what you got to realize is, if you want to clear your name, you yeah. you'd be shouting him on the rooftops, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Obviously, the people who've done it. Yeah, you know, I can tell you their names right now, and yeah. but I wouldn't tell you on on camera because obviously I'm going through a legal case with it. Obviously, trying to still clear my name, uh, but I can tell you off camera all day, you know. Yeah, but you know, the boys. The names who I'm gonna, you know, tell these, you know, you know, you know exactly what you fucking done. Um, you know, you call my name out in our house, and you threaten to rape my eleven eleven year old little sister. You know, you let me suffer that fucking prison sentence for you, and it's about time you fucking get dragged to justice, don't you? So uh, I told you your day had come, so let's get it coming, is it? I yeah. can, I, I can like, yeah. They, they're obviously still about these people in the ends. They're still in, in they're still in the same area. They, uh, they still know exactly what's happening, Carl. I told them when I was a fifteen-year-old boy, they'll have their day. You know, well, I, you know, the power of social media now is it, here. Like, you know, maybe they did think then they could get away with it, and and they probably still do. And I, I, I respect you for the fact that you haven't really said their names. Yeah. But the fact, you know, you're trying to give them an opportunity really to come forward. Do you think any of them would? Do you know why they wouldn't come forward? They wouldn't come forward because they know exactly what's going to happen to them. They, you know, they, they're going to look what happens to people who get wrong convicted, you know. Uh, they'll get fucking slammed for it, you know. They're not going to come forward for it. But I'll put them forward for it. At the end of the day, they fucked my, my life up. So, so are you saying that one day you will be seeing the names when the... One, one day as soon as I go to so court. You're itching, really? Listen, I'm itching. As soon as I step up in that fucking dock, their names are coming out my mouth and I'm going to prove my fucking innocence with my evidence I got. Yeah? A million percent. So back to the evidence briefly, and um, yeah, like what was all... That was just the, the one evidence was the alibi, was it? Uh, the kind of what your mother said and... Well, this is, this is the, uh, the argument I've been trying to put on my head for years. Obviously, my mum was saying I left my house at 10 past six with my two mates. So obviously, did the police obviously think there was three of us then? And obviously, that put me at the scene of the robbery. Um, they found a footprint in this woman's property. And it went... But it was two sizes too small for me. So obviously, I went to prison with the prison, the trainers I had on. Because obviously, you know... Did they have the imprint on them? They had the imprint. They had the same imprint? They had they? The, nah. No, complete, uh. completely different imprints, completely wrong size, right? Um, but because it's for maybe they said he still could have been. This there, is this yeah. is this is what I'm saying. Like it, they could have made me out to be one of them, and obviously not snitching the other boys up, you know. But yeah, the woman was on the corner watching. After I got chased from the taxis, you know, she was watching us for a good twenty minutes, so she had a description of me for that ID parade, and she knows exactly what she's done. Um, nothing was mentioned about a knife. Mm. Uh, obviously, went to court and stuff. Uh, nothing was mentioned about the footprint, because obviously it wasn't mine. It was just a woman saying I was there. So obviously I had the sentence for it. Recently now, I found out the hammer is in my evidence box. So why wasn't I brought up in court? Well... Trying to be tread carefully on it because obviously she was a victim, but at yeah. the same time, is she lying then? Be like, maybe she probably thought she did see you there, but at the end of the day, I know you said you felt sorry for that woman, but she's put you, she's probably the the the, the, the main factor to you going to prison because it's well, her eyes out. You're not going to believe this, and I, you know, a lot of people are not going to believe this, but one of the boys who done this burglary, uh, Described the same as me, you know, curly hair, big ears. Oh, have she seen him? Up. Have she seen him? See what I mean? But this is what I'm saying. I need to get to the bottom of it, and you know. Can I'm, you just but right? Can you right? We're gonna cut. Can you just tell me the the names off the camera? Yeah. Go. Okay, so I, he's just told me the people. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I I um I know of three of them. I probably know the other two, but I know three of the ones you are saying. Yeah. Um, don't surprise me at all. Um, I know the one is prolific. The one still and, doing and, it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he lived in my own area. And um, 
the fact that you said about coming from, you know, it, it makes sense now where you said two of them come yeah. from the area because I know the two you mentioned ain't from your from area, area and they would go around all the areas burgling. Burgling, thank um, you. Um, yeah. and, and I know that for a fact. Like, I know. Like, yeah. Because that's one thing I was always, as a kid, I would never burgle a house. No. Nah. I'd do anything. I'll, f I'll fuck you up. I'll fucking that's what I'm saying. put a brick for yeah, your car and exactly I'll shoplift, but I, yeah. I just wouldn't burgle houses. So, you know, my, my mum had it done to us when we were kids, you know. Uh, <laughs> Christmas Day, Christmas Fuck Eve. Yeah, no. Everything was taken. Presents, money, you know, trainers, bikes, the lot. It was all taken. So, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Your mum had it done to us? D done to her, like her, her oh, house yeah, was robbed, right, you know. Yeah, it's fucking sad, man. But, and that's that's why... I you think, know the effects. I think I grew up, that's why I, I grew up so polite and stuff, because obviously I knew that shit was wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, do you know what, like, um, just from you telling me those people, it's kind of made me, like, it, I, I'm still not saying that you weren't there, because you could have been, but it's, make, it's making more sense to me yeah. now, and, and, oh, mate, I, I'm, t I'm, like, I'm not a grass, but if I'd done 18 years for someone, and they're still going around the area, and it's not even like, it's not even like they have, like, stopped doing them type of crimes, no, no, no. oh, we had a close shave there, let's stop it. Oh, leave it. Like, the two of them I know you just mentioned, I know we're still... Prolific. Well, the one I mentioned to you just now off camera, he's uh, literally got out in January for another yeah, aggravated, sad. you know? On uh, the doorsteps as well. It's fucking... Can you imagine how frightened she out that woman, <laughs> that woman and, was? You know, this is this is what I'm saying. You know, if, there's, if this woman is seeing this, you know, I understand she was scared back then. I understand what she went through because it, it wasn't a lie. You know, she obviously went through the knife to her throat and whatever, whatever. But it wasn't me. But have you ever tried reaching out to this woman since? Because obviously when you get out, it's not like you're still on license or stay away from here. It's... No, I have. I um, When I went, I had an, I went back in 2012 for another sentence. And obviously, I don't know whether I should be saying this on is camera it, or not. Is it, so, well, is it the same offence? No, nah, it's a different offence because obviously I was joined Enterprise. Yeah, I was, I was just trying to test you. And was it a big nah, 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 nah. yeah. But... Okay. So, so I just explain it? If you want, if, if yeah. you feel like, listen, you're being honest about it. Well, I'll, I'll just say, you know, I went back in 2012, uh, joined Enterprise case, what's you know. To, well, to be honest, like, if I was accused of something at that time and when, then however long, like, I'd probably, I say it all the time, um, once you commit that first crime, it's hard to get out of that life. Yeah, and, it is. you know, it's obviously what's happened with you. I understand that. Um, you know, I, I understand that if you've grown up on our life in a shitty rundown area, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a shitty life. You're gonna have to graft as much as you can, you know. But I never ever done burglaries now, you know. And I understand this woman went through shit. I really yeah. fucking do. But at the same time, a 15 year old boy did too, you know. Uh, there was no reason for it. Literally no reason for it. And pff, they just, have to sentence someone. Exactly what I was thinking, you know. And I went back in 2012 for another joint enterprise case. Uh, I was involved, you know, I was involved in something. And I'd done a victim awareness course when I was in there. And I tried contacting this victim from 2004 just to say, you know, come and have a, come in prison, have a chat with me. I need to explain something, you know. Uh, didn't want to know. Couldn't contact or she did get older no, the, and just didn't want to know? The prison officers did... Did her contact her, the prison officers did contact her, but she said she don't want to lay eyes on me ever again. But I think she knows what's, exactly what she's done there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, I was going to say, well, fucking hell, it must have been you because she, she don't want to be traumatised. But then it could be guilt. Exactly. I don't want to fucking see him because I fucking sentenced him. Well, this is what I'm saying. So, and to be honest, I, I think... You know, I think she went into a mental state after I got sentenced because she knew exactly... I didn't do it. You know, I was I was a 15-year-old boy up in Crown Court fucking begging for my innocence, crying to her. You know, I've never seen you in my life before. Never happened, you know? Never happened. And you, yeah, because, you know, you I, I, you said it once or twice. I know I didn't do it. Like, if you ever had thoughts in your mind, like, in them, in them, in, in them prison cells, maybe I did do it. Do you know what? That's a good question as well, because... The thoughts I have is like I was there, you know, 
those transcripts of what happened to that lady, I, I go through that every night, you know. I cry every morning over there. And I still remember the detail like I was in court a half hour ago, Yeah, you know. I still remember word for word. I still remember everyone's faces. You know, I'm not going to lie. I have I have found the victim. I, I do know who she is. Uh, and Living stuff in like Cardiff. That. Living in Cardiff and stuff. Um, do you ever just feel the need to... I feel the need just to, to fucking send them my link to my story, you know. Do this one, it's hopefully. Has, it's hashtag justice, Jamie, uh, justice for Jamie P. So hopefully, you know, it's all over social media. Obviously, you've seen it on Facebook as well. Um, I, I reckon I reckon you probably think about here probably once a day and think, I just hope she sees this one day and just... I think of it every fucking minute. It's, it's a God's honest truth. I don't go a day... A day goes by in my life where I don't cry about it. I don't, you know, I smashed my room up this morning before coming here because of my anger, you know. My kids have seen me crying every day. My kids have seen me doing this and that. It's not fucking fair. They didn't do that burglary. I didn't do that burglary. So it was about time I fucking sorted my life out, you know, Carl? Um, yeah. How, how, how do you think your mother has dealt with it all? Because she essentially put you in prison, whether it was on accident or... Do you think it was an accident? Um, do you know what? Do you know what? It, it, I told my mum to go court and say, look, you know, tell the truth. Obviously, me thinking I, I wasn't going to go to prison for that. Yeah. So... <clears throat> We went Good karma court. type of thing, innit? Like, yeah. just tell the truth, yeah, you know, I'm sure we truth. all get that. Yeah, I'll get fucking, you know, not guilty. But nah, she went to court. She told them I left my house at 10 past six, which was, you know, right. Because obviously I went out with my mates. And then that dad just, dad just found me guilty, you know. Obviously she didn't see me till the next day. And I was saying, you know, I was in the house with so, so. There was no record of my alibis on, on record. So mm. it looks like I'm lying. You know and it I mean? is, yeah, no, I'm not going to lie, like, yeah. from the outside, without speaking to you and, and you telling me the other names and the way you act, like, it could just, be, it could be put to bed as you, you done it, just shut up, like, it but could this, be. But this is what I'm saying, you know, I've had, a, I've had deep arguments with my family over there, you know, they're saying, oh, you must have fucking done it, you've, you've done, you've done jail. Well, no, never mind that side, let's, let's talk about the side, like, you know, it's been nearly 19 years now, I'm still fighting my case, you know. So, who's been the most supportive um, to you, towards you, for you, uh, in this whole, this whole fiasco, this whole nightmare? Uh, who's been by your side, or is anyone? Do you know what? I'm going to say one person, and ask my little sister. You know, she got threatened, you know, to be raped when she was little by these boys. And she had to suffer trauma for me, you know. And I, I, I put my hand up to her, you know. She's doing fucking very well now. She, you know, she's moved on with her baby and stuff. And you know, you, you know. Yeah, shout out to CT. And yeah, you know, CT. CT's a legend, mate. But uh, yeah, he's you know she's settling she's settling down now. She, you know, we lost mum in two thousand and twelve. So you know, new brother, my brother two, found that out, didn't two it? years ago. Yeah, you knew him, so. And my cousin a couple of months back. But, um, yes, you know, you lose family, don't you? You know, family come and go. So the mates, so-called mates, you know, so. So but what's, what's, what's next, Jane? Um, what's next? You know, I'm just trying to, I don't want to repeat myself, you know, my story. I don't want to repeat my story. Um, but, for social media and stuff like that, I want to try and be a support worker for young boys, you know, who's going through prison and stuff. I want to try and get my life sorted. But at the same time, I'm I'm going to push 100% to get this case sorted because... This could be the death of you though, mate. Let it be. Let it be because it could have been the death of me when I was a 15-year-old boy in prison, you know. But in you letting them win, still fucking dwelling on it. You know, you've done the sentence. That's yeah. what some people would say. You've done it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Those other things you just mentioned, until that's put to bed, though, right? You can't move on with your life until... Do you want to put subtitles on that so people can make sure they hear that? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. You can't social work and still be. No, I. Yeah, true, true, no, true, yeah, true. Like, like, Oh, looking at it like that, yeah, of course, you've got to clear your name to be fucking... Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, get no, but, get no, but that's what I'm saying. I, I, I want to clear my name first. You know, I want to get my priorities into, you know, line and stuff like that. But, and then, I, 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 but, but looking at it, it's like the only way this is going to get put to bed is if these guys, yeah. and looking at them, half of them ain't got a fucking backbone, bro. Backbone, nah. So I can't see that. Unless that woman... Uh, that's but, that's what I've been thinking. That woman needs. I need to get that woman on my side. And, and but you've got to have to hope, haven't you? At the end of the I, day, and, and 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 hopefully, when people see this, this this could make a difference. Yeah, I, I hope it really. I hope it do. Like you know, because you know, like I said millions of times, if I was here involved, you know, I'd done the sentence. I accept it. Move on with my life. But it's not as easy as that. You know, I'm. I suffer yeah. with mental health these days, and. Yeah, how is how is how is your mental health, mate? Like, what's um, take us for a day, mate? A day, don't get up till half past nine, ten. Uh, quite good. Cry. <laughs> it is quite good, but you've got to have the consequences with it. You know, I wake up crying. Like this morning before I come to this interview, I smashed my room up, pulled all my drawers, I punched the fucking wall. Why? Because obviously it's the next step in my life, um, and the only person I want to prove to is my mum. To be honest. You know, she's the only person who suffered with her boy going to prison. And that that was my big fight from day one, you know, proved to my mum because, let's be honest, how many mums out there feel dirty for their son doing stuff like that, you know? And for me, knowing I ain't someone like that, I need, I've got to prove my name, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. This... How many people like you do you think there is out there, Jane? Um, We've interviewed at least six. Honestly, I've met about 12 in prison all my life, you know, back and forth. There's a good, I've met a good 12 innocent people. Well, and you know they were innocent. Yeah, like they've explained their story, you know. You, let's be honest. If you meet someone in the street and they tell you a story, you, you know you, they're lying. You you you, look, you think in yourself, no, you're, you're lying and you know it. You know, um, for me to get my story out there and come on this, this central club and I, you know, is a big achievement for me because it weren't all enhanced back then. You know, we haven't had this stuff back 10 years ago, you know, 20, 20 years ago. And that's the only reason I, I put it all over social media because obviously everything's in hands these days. Yeah. And, you know, if someone looked into my case, which I hope they do, or comes across it or whatever, they'll know exactly what have happened, you know, when I explain my story and stuff. They'll, you know, in Not and just only the um, the explaining, though. If you did get someone who was allowed to dive into him, I know you said you've got a solicitor now. Yeah. Are they able to look at and find evidence to think, we got a case here, we got well, a chance? This is what we're in the middle of now. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to get a transcript of the case, of yeah. the, the courts, but... I don't seem to fucking find them anywhere. Everyone's turning me down. Mm. Some saying they're, they're destroyed. Some saying they haven't. Well, if they're destroyed, how did I find out the hammer was in my evidence box? You know? You did, you was telling me as well about, you know, some, some kind of other evidence that just kind of miraculously appeared uh, was the newspaper articles. You said you, you was looking for for ages, you could never find it. And yeah. then the solicitor randomly found it. Well, yeah, well... Obviously, when I when I went in, obviously, you know, all, all the people from my area said, you know, you read the newspapers and, you know, I was having letters and that. And I've only just found it. I, you know, I was explaining to my, my recent partner and stuff like that. And, you know, we were searching for it every night. Two months down the line, five months down the line, you know, for, for a year solid, looking for this, looking for pictures, looking for this, that. Uh, couldn't find nothing. Uh, last, maybe last year or the year before, when I put my story up, it miraculously popped up online, you know? That's mad. And it says on there, updated in 2014. Ah, there we are then. So why is it only coming up now, though? This is why I don't care. Yeah. See? So it's still like five years off. Exactly. And my solicitor, he's, he's the same, John Wilkins. He, he's he's as fucking... He's still about. He's still about. He's working for another solicitor. So, uh... He's actually working for my solicitors now in Cardiff. For obviously, I That's tried. That's mad, mad. And do you know what? I phoned up. 
I phoned up the solicitors to have a chat and I only wanted to move my file to my new solicitors and the email, the email back I had off that solicitor was to say like, Jamie, you know, we're not helping you with your, with your appeal. You know, I didn't mention anything about an appeal. An appeal didn't come out of my mouth. I asked for my file to be transferred to a local solicitors, you know, to my new area. And he knows what's going on. He knows exactly what he's fucking done. I told him when I had my passport signed by him in 2007, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm having my day. You know that, don't you? You know? And he went bright red. So he, he knows exactly what's coming. He, he knows exactly what he's fucking done. A lot of them do. You know? Mm. So It's a mad one, James. And, you know, I, I, I really hope that you get closure and peace in all of this. Yeah. The one thing, you know, that I love that we can do here at the podcast is be able to give people like yourself hope to just be able to just put your story across Hopefully someone will pick this up. Yeah. Someone who, who who fights for cases like this. Have you spoken to Michael O'Brien? I've been in touch with Michael O'Brien. Uh, last year we had a good conversation, you know, exchange numbers and stuff. What does he think? Does he think um, it's a long shot? No, I was having a I, I was having a good chat with Michael O'Brien and he was getting on he was he said he was getting on to his team in uh the uni, Innocence Project in the uni. Well he let me down because obviously Di Morris died. Yeah. You know, so obviously he's, he's on that case. But, uh, you know, it's, I need to get them transcripts, I do. I need to get them transcripts because that'll clear my name. What she says in her story and stuff like that. I still remember it, it like it was yesterday, but I need them transcripts for my, yeah, you know, yeah, to reopen yeah. a case. So, so it's just trying to wait on them then? It's just literally just pushing, if, pushing forward now. Okay, so if these transcripts don't come forward in the next, say, year... Are you just going to go f all out, use, use the fucking people? <clears throat> right. This is this is my plan. If it don't, you know, if no one looks, gets hold of me within the next six months, as uh, soon as Christmas goes now, you know, I'm going to be getting stickers, my hashtag, uh, banners, you know, I've already got orders on T-shirts and stuff like that. I'm going to spread my story as much as I can, you know. Um, you know, I've got the backing off of a solicitor or my followers and stuff like that. So, no, I, I, I am going to push it. Um, I'm going to get as, as much as heard as I can. And, you know, hopefully he'll come to my justice, you know? Yeah. With a bit of luck. Well, there's not much else I, we, we can say, you know. I think I think we've, we've put it across fairly, you know, and um, we've given you your shot, hopefully, that, yeah. you know, this happens and hopefully they step forward and hopefully, you know... It's all yeah. hope, isn't it? It's it, all it, hope. Do you know what? It is all hope. And I had hope when I was a 15-year-old boy and I'm 34 now and I ain't giving up that hope. So, you know, I don't care if they come forward or not. When I get into my court case, I will be telling names and I will be telling the fucking truth. Simple as that. Okay. So. Um, there's one thing we do. We ask the guests to look yeah. down that camera yeah. This is your the last minute, two minutes of say what you want to say down that camera, yeah, right. to the people. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you for, for you know watching uh, the podcast and stuff like that. Um, I appreciate everyone who supported me and stuff, and you know you'd be you'd be seeing me more over the, the uh, internet and stuff like that, and hopefully clear my name one day, guys, and. Uh, Thank you all, honestly. It means so much. That's it. Listen, thank you so much, James. I really appreciate you coming down and talking. Holding the mic. It's gonna yeah, I know, it's going to fall. No, listen. Hey, I wish you all the best. Guys, um, if any of you, you know, feel touched by this by this story, feel like, you know, there is definitely uh, something you can do to help, then please leave us a comment. Get at us on our yeah. social media. Hashtag Jamie Perkins. He's on Facebook, Instagram, the law. Uh, the hashtag is uh, hashtag justice for Jamie P. So give it a share for me, guys. And yeah, you know, yeah. get it out there. Tell us what you think in the comments, guys. Do you think he's guilty? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Doesn't everyone got their opinion? You know, every, everyone will have yeah. their opinion. No, you tell know? us what you think in the comments, guys, literally. Um, and... Uh, yeah, Jamie, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you so much. No worries. Till next time. No worries. Stay central.
The Central Club. Mm-hmm.